and welcome everybody to the channel my name is Keith Barker it is great to have you here to share tools and tips today to help you get your CCNA and the tip I have today is hands-on practice please please it's really important to do hands-on practice to get really good at pretty much anything that you need to learn if it involves doing something in fact recently very recently I'd like to share a picture with you uh, very recently I'm, I'm having uh, this used to be a workshop area and I'm having it redone. I'm going to make a recording studio out of it. It's going to be super, super fun. I'm so excited. Now, these gentlemen, and uh, shout out to Zach, Rob, and Mark, uh, are amazing technicians. And what they did, let me show you another picture after the fact here. Um, they, they moved the water softener and the sink out of the space so that I could have it in the garage and then I can have my workshop be here for recording. Anyway, they were great. It was so fun to watch their expertise. I thought to myself, you know what, I bet you. The joke that we had was uh, not that it wasn't their first rodeo. They had done this before many, many times and they had a lot of experience in doing it. And that's what we need to have with Cisco devices, the fundamentals, making sure we can figure things like um, IP routing and things like switching and VLANs and trunks and ether channel and all those cool things to have practice in configuring them and practicing them, including AAA. So I created a while back, I created this video right here called Locked Out. And it was about AAA and troubleshooting AAA. And I also added some NTP to it and some SSH as well. And a lot of people responded like, yeah, nailed it. I was like, yes, yes. Even if you're not completely ready, uh, if you tackle the lab and you practice it, you can come up against roadblocks, which are great because be, they become stepping stones. Because you can look something up and say, okay, how does this work? Or why doesn't it work? Or join us on Discord and we can talk about it. It's fantastic. So my hat's off. It's already off. My hat's off to everybody who attempted this lab already. And somebody asked in the Discord server, they said, hey, can you do a walkthrough? And so I'm going to do a walkthrough, a solution for this lab. So spoiler alert, if you still want to do it, just um, 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 stop now and do the lab first and then come back and check out the walkthrough for any pieces you had challenges with. All right, so to download this lab also, by the way, uh, it is this lab right here to be clear, Cisco PT, AAA, SSH, and NTP T-Shoot 2020-0516. So that's the actual lab. You can download this at thekeithbarker.com. We'll have links below. So it's there, it's not going anywhere if you wanna practice with it. All right, so I have that lab open. And here it is, and here's the instructions. Bob the employee wants, uh, we need to have Bob the employee on this employee device be able to SSH to this multi-layer switch. So I can see that this there's no radio frequency waves in Packet Tracer here, so he's not connected to the Wi-Fi network. So I'm gonna take a couple shortcuts and I'm gonna tackle the issue of, okay, can anybody SSH to this multi-layer switch? And so let's start there. So here at the multi-layer switch, and I'll open this up a little bit. Um, also, it's a log on because uh, <laughs> I didn't intend to do it, but in this lab, the log on is admin, and the default password for admin here in this lab is capital C I S E O exclamation mark two three. And that password is also specified uh, right here, capital C I S E O exclamation mark two three. So if if we wanted to verify that a user like Bob could SSH to this device on a VTY line. Then for, so when a user connects to a remote, to a Cisco device remotely, they're really connecting, they're connecting on one of the logical VTY lines, then using the protocol Telnet, unsecure, insecure, or SSH, more secure. And we could test it right here. That's what I'm saying. We could just test it right here and see if SSH even works. To do that, we do SSH space dash L for login. And then we put Bob's name and a space, and then the IP address we want to SSH to. So I'm just gonna, um, hover here and we have these addresses 10101, 10201010201 we could go to any of those addresses so all I'm doing is I'm SSHing from the local switch to itself just to verify that SSH works and so we'll put in the IP address of 10.10.0.1 and it says eh, gone so we're gonna let's solve this first before we start going off to the Wi-Fi network which looks like it might be down so let's do a show run and let's take a look at the VTY lines. And right here on the VTY lines, it says transport input none. That means no go, no SSH, no telnet, no nothing. So let's fix that. So line VTY zero through four, which is the five VTY lines on this device. And we'll say transport input SSH, or we can say all, but we want SSH to work. Then now that we've done that, we'll try our SSH again with this. 
SSH-L, username Bob, 101001, press enter. Now it's asking for a password, capital C-I-S-E-O, exclamation mark two three. Huh. All okay, right, one more time. Uh, password, capital C-I-S-E-O, exclamation mark two three. All right, not letting us in, but at least SSH is working. Now we're one step closer. So let's, let's do this next. Let's do it. Uh, let me bring this full screen up. Shink. There we go. Uh, let's do a show run and let's talk about AAA for a moment. So here we have AAA new model. I'll get my pen out. So here we have AAA, AAA new model, which says, hey, there's a new sheriff in town. This is the new way of doing authentication, authorization, and accounting. And I also have a default set, AAA authentication login default. The default is going to apply to the VTY lines unless we specify a more specific method list to the VTY line. So this says AAA login for login authentication. The default method is going to be using a radius server from one of our group of radius servers. All right, so Bob just couldn't log in. Let's verify that we have uh, connectivity to our radius server. So I'm gonna take off my pen here and let's do a shell run pipe include radius. That's going to show me any output in the running config that has the word radius in it. And I see our default login authentication and I see a method list that calls it. But the problem here is this multi-layer switch doesn't know how, does not know how to reach a radius server. It's not defined. So if it's a problem. So if this, if somebody SSH is into the switch and the switch needs to talk to a radius server, the switch has to know how to reach that radius server and there needs to be a key defined so that they can securely and be willing to talk to each other back and forth. And I don't see anywhere on the multi-layer switch that we have a radius server defined. Let's go, let's go talk to the radius server and take a look at it. So here on the server, I'm clicking on the server icon and right here in the description it says that the, the server, AAA DNS NTP web server is 103010, this guy right here. So let's bring him out here. We'll click on services and we'll go to AAA. And okay, so here we have, oh, look at that. Okay, so we have the multi-layer switch is a AAA client using TACAX. So this multi-layer switch is set up from the server perspective as a client, meaning I'm ex the AAA server is expecting requests to come in. And it's also expecting, on this with TACAX, and it's also expecting the wireless LAN controller at 10.30.02 to go ahead and make requests via radius. And that would be for authentication if it's using that, I assume it is, for the Wi-Fi networks. So we have a couple choices here. We could uh, include the wireless LAN, the, um, the multi-layer switch as a radius client here and also at the multi-layer switch, or we could just go ahead and tell the multi-layer switch to use a different method. Don't use radius. Your, the the multi-layer switch is already set up as a TACX client. So let's just go modify that. We'll go back to the switch and see this method list right here. AAA authentication login method one. Please use a TACX server. If you can't reach a TACX server, then use the local database. If there's no users in the local database, then go ahead and use the enable password or enable secret, and that'll let you in. So let's just tell the VTY lines that they should use AAA authentication login method one and then it would use the TACAC server. And let's make sure we have a TACAC server defined. Go run, pipe, <laughs> uh, include TACAC, or TAC. Yeah, so we have a TACAC server defined and we have a key of Cisco one, Cisco exclamation mark two, three, and this is the key I saw on the server. So let's change the method list. So run, and we'll just go to our VTY lines. Line, VTY, zero through four. All right, here we go, and we'll specify Login, authentication. This is in the VTY lines, and we want to use Word. <laughs> it's asking for a method list. That's what the description says. What method list do you want to use? I think it was method one. Um, let me scroll up and take a look. I want to make sure we put the right one in. We want to use this method list right here called method one, which will then use TACAX. And for authenticating an administrator who's accessing the device, TACAX is not a bad idea. All right, so we'll call this. M E T H O D one one. All right. And now that we've done that, let's test it locally. We'll sort out Bob's wireless device in a moment. So we'll do a S let's see if it's in my history here. There it is. SSH L Bob with the local IP address on this switch. 
and password capital C I S E O exclamation mark two three. I'm hoping it's gonna work. And it works. All right, now for authorization, we didn't configure authorization, but now it's asking for, you know, if we type in enable, now it's the enable secret. Great, and that worked. And on a real system, we could have accounting records showing that, hey, Bob logged in and da da da. So we've solved part of the challenge. The part of the challenge is Bob is, well, Bob can log in with SSH. Oh, and also let's go take a look. Let me pause for a moment here. So right here at the switch, if we do this, show users, this is a good one. There we go. There's the admin that we're logged on right now as. Oh, wait a sec. We're logged on as Bob right now. Uh, see this asterisk right here? That asterisk is telling us where we're currently viewing this from. So we, on the console, logged in as admin. Then we SSH'd in as Bob, and we did it. It came. We came in on BTY line zero, and the asterisk shows us that that's our current view. And if we do it as show SSH, it's going to show us that we have an SSH session. So 1.99, don't freak out about that. That just means it's ca uh, capable of like version one and version two of SSH. So there's a long history by it. it's called 199, but we're good. We're good. SSH is working. All right. So now uh, let's do this. Let's type in exit and let's go ahead and get SSH working from uh, Bob on the employee device. So I'm going to uh, take a look at Bob's computer or his device, and let's take a click on config and wireless. He is connected to Corp Wi-Fi. Oh, and Corp Wi-Fi is actually using Radius for authentication of users to get on the network. Uh, I noticed that when we looked at the server. And um, okay, so why is he not connecting? Let's let's go uh, let's go take a look at the wireless LAN controller. The wireless LAN controller is at 10.30.02. So we'll grab a PC that, that we can use to get there. And on the PC, we'll go to desktop, open up a browser, do HTTPS, colon, wackety whack, 10.30.0.2, I think that was it. Yep, and we'll log in. And the instructions in the lab say the username is admin, and the password is Cisco123 with the capital, sorry. <laughs> I said one, two, three, and I typed one, two, three. Uh, it's admin and capital C, I-S-E-O, exclamation mark, two, three, and enter. Oh, you know, I've got a weird situation on my computer. It doesn't always happen for everybody. But when I'm in Packet Tracer, if I press enter, it doesn't accept the password. So I need to actually click on OK. So that time the password was correct. All right, and clicking login. All right, fantastic. And... Uh, let's go to wireless LANs, and there's our warp Wi-Fi, and over here it says it's disabled, which is a really bad deal. So we need to enable it, so we'll go edit that wireless LAN, click on the enable checkbox, click on apply, and if the authentication works, we should see a little radio frequency between empl the employee's device and the access point, or an access point. Yay, there it is. I was like, well, what's next? Okay, so a little reminder about wireless LAN controllers and making sure the wireless and the infrastructure works great. So Bob, let's go up to Bob's computer, his mobile device. We'll go to desktop. We'll click on, uh, where are we going to click on? We're going to click a command prompt, and we'll do SSH-L, log in as Bob, and verify we can log in to the multilayer switch. Uh, any any address on that switch will do, by the way. Show IP config. And the default gateway we're using is 103001. That is the actual multilayer switch, too. So we'll do a SSH-L, login as Bob, to 10.30.0.1. And survey says password Cisco123, actually exclamation mark 23. And we are, we've authenticated. So the multilayer switch, using the method list we specified on the VTY lines, checked with the AAA server. Verified Bob's credentials, and then the switch let him in via SSH. The, uh, the wireless LAN controller also reached out via Radius. And for SSH, we use TACAX, and for Radius, the wireless LAN controller reached out via Radius to the server for the Wi-Fi session for that authentication. All great stuff. Okay, are we done? Are we done? Are we done? Um, Bob is using... Okay, so Bob can now do ML SSH to the multilayer switch. Fantastic. Bonus points if you can get multilayer switch one synchronized as an NTP client as well. Okay, well, they're right here. Let's just check. 
I'm gonna hover over the server. The server is at 1030.010, right? And I'm gonna click on the server, make sure NTP is running, right? So NTP is enabled, fantastic. And oh, and we're using authentication. That's important. So we're, authentication is enabled. The key is one, the password is capital C I S E O exclamation mark two three. And this server believes it is uh, March 2022, the 22nd, March 22nd, 2022. That's what this, so if we sync up time-wise, that's what the multi-layer switch will believe uh, based on UTC time, which is how NTP is served up. All right, and let's go, let's go to the switch. So here on the switch, we'll do a show NTP uh, status. Clock is unsynchronized. That's not good. Do a show NTP association. And a real a real device you could do show association detail for even more nitty gritty. Um, okay, so this right here shows us <laughs> who we're trying to synchronize with. Uh, that tilde right there means configured. So we are trying to reach out to 1.30.0.10, which is not the IP address of our server. We'll do a show run pipe include NTP, just show us the NTP output. Yeah, that's wrong, wrong address, that's gonna hurt. So config T, no, NTP server, 1.30.0.10. And before we actually tell it to use the NTP server, let's also do a do show clock, May. Okay, so this, this device thinks it's May 12th, 2020, 2022, and the server, in fact, let's just, I'm just gonna play around. I'm gonna check the server to 2023. So August 22nd, 2023, just because we can. And that way, when it changes to August, we'll know it's synchronized. We can also do a show NTP status and verify that as well. All right, so party on. Here we go back to the switch and let's set up authentication. So NTP uh, authentication key. Oh, it's gonna make me work here. Authentication key, and let's use key one because we can. And also we're using key one over on the server, so we'll use one everywhere. So just to make it easy, NTP authentication key one, MD5, Cisco, exclamation mark two, three. All right, that's enough. Also, when you put in um, passwords on some systems, if you put a space, a trailing space, sometimes that space gets included as the password. So just be aware when you're putting in commands or specifically passwords that you wanna, if you did a space and a question mark and you wanna not have that space, just back it up before you press enter regarding passwords because that has bit me more than once. All right, NTP authentication key, then NTP and let's do um, trusted key. One, I'm just going down all the NTP commands here for authentication. So NTP trusted key one, right? And NTP authenticate. It's making me type it all out because the other one has the authentication key, great. Let's do a do show history. All right, so we set the, uh, that's the previous part here is for the authentication method. So we got rid of the NTP server, we looked at the clock, we did NTP authentication key one, MD5 Cisco one, two, three, NTP trusted key one, NTP authenticate, and I think we just need to add the NTP server, which is at the IP address 1030.0.10. So let's go and do that. So NTP server is at 10.30.0.10, question mark, E space one. All righty, and now the waiting game begins. Oh, and the CCI lab, this is why they're like, oh. So it takes a while uh, on production systems for clocks to synchronize. And if we do a debug, I don't know if we have debug here or not. Oh yeah, and yeah, we do, oh yeah. We got some debugs. Debug NTP, oh, uh, no debug NTP authentication though, that's okay. So debug NTP is on, so we'll do a show NTP status. So it says unsynchronized right here. Uh, here it says never updated. <laughs> uh, but you notice in the background, it's sending NTP messages out. And so if we do a up arrow and show NTP status, still unsynchronized. This, 
what I'm about to show you is one of the big benefits of still on it's, it's gonna take a while so in the CCA labs like oh oh you know set a reminder to come back and check it later to verify you got everything correct so NTP uses UDP port one two three one two three NTP UDP you and me all right and let's see if I've yeah, still unsynchronized. So here's my favorite packet tracer trick that I learned from Trevor, <laughs> who is one of our Discord admins. And uh, it's this, this button right down here. You can fast forward time. It's like, uh, how, oh, it's, it has 30 second intervals. I'm just clicking it many, many times. Now let's go back and take a look. Uh, yeah, there's all our debug messages that happened. I think it was every 30 seconds or something, but uh, they're all showing up because I, I accelerated time. And let's do an up arrow. And we are now synchronized. Just took long enough to make sure we got it in place. And also shows the, the update here. So authentication is important to be aware of. It's part, uh, NTP is part of the CCNA blueprint. And being aware of the commands for authentication, I would say are also important to be aware of. So thanks for joining me in this, in this walkthrough of this AAA troubleshooting lab. We troubleshot wireless, we troubleshot NTP, we also troubleshot SSH access with AAA with a method list on the server. And I would encourage you, if you, no matter what stage you are in your CCNA journeys, uh, take a stab at this lab. I've got 16 as of right now on thekeithbarker.com. I'll put a link below. If you haven't done any of those labs yet, boof, book some time. There's also a special playlist on the Keith Barker channel just for Packet Tracer Labs that gives you an intro. And then I'll also add the, wa the walkthroughs like this to it as well so you can have some fun with it. So again, the goal of this channel is to help you and provide some tools and tips today that can help you get your CCNA. Join us in the Discord server. We have a great time there as well. Thank you to all the moderators and admins who do such a great job in supporting their brothers and sisters. We're glad to have you. And uh, the YouTube channel is all free. The Discord server is all free. We'd like you to come and study and get that CCNA and use it as a really good stepping stone towards whatever you're going to do in the future with IT. It'll be a really good foundation to build on. So having said that, I'll catch you in the next live event, including on Sundays at 11 o'clock a.m. Pacific time. We have a quiz, an online quiz. We can support up to 2,000 people. So get there, get in, have some fun. And uh, the topics will be announced on social. So till next event. Have a great time and happy, happy studies. Do you ever feel you don't get out what you're putting in?